eight gigabytes of VRAM. It's a topic uh, of Steam Machine specs that's caused a lot of controversy, and we've got a lot of questions from supporters. Darjar Co. in brackets, Dan, says, Happy half fortnight, lads! Exclamation point. To what ex- extent do you think the Gabe Cube's exiguous eight gigabytes of VRAM will be facilitated by the relatively low memory bandwidth of Switch 2 and upcoming PlayStation Portable? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Probably nothing at all, because this is a PC-based endeavor. Uh, do you think Valve will have an RDNA 5 GameCube Ultra, maybe with a lunchbox handle, ready to go up against PS6 and Xbox Magnus in 2027, 2028? Feels like it would be a missed opportunity if they did not, as such a large performance golf would open up. Perhaps at the end of the day, Valve only expects it to have a half-life. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Oh, okay. Um, Matt. Hello, gents. Enjoyed your Steam Things coverage. It's a good brand name, a good umbrella brand name there. Uh, enjoy your th- Steam Things coverage and so pleased Valve recognised your value. Now you are sovereign and invited you to their HQ to cover these. You've mentioned slight concerns about the 8 gigs of VRAM being a potential issue on the Steam machine, but I'm wondering that considering the deck seems to be much more VRAM efficient than a Windows PC at the same settings? Do you think Valve are using that as a considerable part of their cost slash performance judgment? Would that potentially mean for normal raster graphics, it will probably not be an issue, but for RT and upscaling that usually require more VRAM, the system might find itself much more constrained there. As it looks like GDDR6 costs around $28 per eight gigabyte, was this a cost saving really worth making or do other factors like changes to system architecture bring the cost up more significantly? Happy independenting, exclamation point. Um, Magnum Stash says, uh, can you foresee the new Steam Machine making use of a more console-like approach to running games to mitigate deficiencies in VRAM capacity? The Steam Machine is effectively a fixed architecture like a console, albeit without unified memory. Well, that's kind of like big deal. Uh, so can the guaranteed presence of a fast SSD coupled with perhaps one or two quote-unquote Steam Machine verified performance options discouraging incessant tinkering, be leveraged to reduce reliance on storing assets in VRAM. So Alex, basically sort of going back to what you were talking about earlier here, there's uh, basically um, two camps here. Should have had more VRAM and don't worry, Valve know what they're doing. Uh, Linux is more efficient, it will be fine. Uh, Which part (laughs) do you believe? Well, I think there should have been more VRAM is definitely the way I feel about it. Now, when 2020 rolled around and eight gigabytes was there, I was actually disappointed that their 3070 only had eight gigs uh, at that point in time, because I saw its future scaling being impacted. Because there are things that you cannot scale in VRAM. They're just, your GPU needs them to be the game, to have the game render in front of you. And if a game, for example, is using hardware ray tracing, and more and more games are, that's the way it is. You know, you look at your Indiana Jones, your Dooms, they all have a lot of, you know, forced RT in them. And in that case, uh, that's me with saying that in a, in a joking way, by the way. Um, the, these are things you just cannot scale. You can scale textures a bit better. Uh, a lot of games don't do it in an automated fashion, though. Most games allow a manual user control over this. And sometimes they even load up with improper settings per default. Uh, I Like earlier this year, I talked about Monster Hunter, right? Uh, that is still a thing that the game can potentially do, load up with the wrong texture setting for a poor experience based upon your output resolution. And all these are things where basically where I'm saying you cannot trust every game developer to put the same amount of time and effort into making an eight gigabyte experience good enough because they are actually worried about making the PlayStation 5 version good enough quite often or not. And even though the PlayStation 5 has drastically less total RAM capacity than a Steam machine, it has a flexibility in how it's allocated. So they obviously do use things in a system RAM-like way where only the CPU is touching them, but they'll be able to allocate easily 10 gigabytes, maybe even more, depending upon the game, to just GPU-related tasks. And they're not having to double up with those things over a PCIe bus, streaming them from system memory to, uh, uh, into, into VRAM. So 
that's kind of, I, although we have those Series S versions, a lot of the times the Series S version settings are not available on PC games, even though I think that's not very cool. Um, and also you wouldn't maybe want to run those settings because the games in Series S frankly look awful sometimes. Like they really don't look good, especially for someone who's coming from a like me where I've seen it running on like a 4060 and it looks a lot better. Uh, so we don't want to necessarily target that kind of experience and just holistically, I think in general, I thought we were going to be finally moving beyond the eight gigabyte barrier for GPUs because I thought potentially with the next launch of whatever RDNA 5 is, as well as the super refresh from NVIDIA, which is MIA at the moment, I thought we would finally be beyond the eight gigabytes as the kind of low end mainstream entry here. But with Valve putting out this device, we actually see another continuation of the eight gigabyte barrier into the foreseeable future. And I presume this will sell at least to a good degree. So that means we have more GPUs out there that can only address that amount of VRAM. And I actually don't see that as a positive because I have yet to be fully convinced that developers are good enough and have the resources to dedicate to make those eight gigabyte experiences universally great without requiring tinkering. And that's a thing. Eight gigabytes doesn't shield you from poor development, whereas 12 could easily do that in comparison. Uh, so I find those are all very negative aspects of the device. And I don't think uh, a lot of Linux uh, lower levelness here will be the saving thing because the texture allocation isn't that fine grain for that many games. It really isn't. It's usually either it's like the game works well on eight or it only works well on like 10 and above. It's it's not mm -hmm. like there's this gradation of, oh, you had 300 megabytes more, you can now run the game way better. It usually mm -hmm. isn't that way. It's usually the allocations are much larger than that because the textures, when you start getting into, because they scale textures by 2K, 2K, 4K, 4K, or 3K, 3K, it's like, the, the three-dimensional value there is so much higher, to say the least, in how it scales. So it, it's it's not a great position to be in, I actually think, for this device, and it's my most disappointing aspect of it. Yeah, I'm kind of resigned to the fact now that eight gigabytes is is not going away in the way that six gig did. Yeah, mm. it's such a shame, man. Uh, I'm kind of resigned to that at this point, and it's, it is a bit sad, but you know, ultimately it does seem to be a value uh, situation. What Valve was saying about affordability is exactly what NVIDIA and AMD were saying about their um, eight gigabyte offerings with the 5060 and the 9060. Um, and it's a bit sad, but, you know, we're kind of on this situation where, well, the vast majority of the library will work fine, right? But looking forward, it's kind of like you just don't know what you're going to get with an eight gigabyte card whenever a new AAA game arrives. And it's becoming increasingly uh, problematic. Mm -hmm. And um, the solution does seem to be, well, you know, first port of call is to reduce your, um, your texture quality, sometimes quite significantly. Um, the other thing is, if this device is aiming to open up the total addressable market, you know, um, to bring in more mainstream casual players, do they actually know about this situation? Do they know that they could potentially get a much better, if uglier, <laughs> experience by lowering the texture setting? Um, that's that's a big question. What do you think, Oliver? Yeah, that last question is interesting because it does require a certain level of savvy understanding. And not just understanding of like how things work gener generally, but understanding of games specifically, how games specifically load up VRM, how games specifically load up uh, memory in order to make those optimization decision, decisions. And like, in a lot of cases, I wouldn't trust myself necessarily to make the right calls out of the box, at least not without like some VRAM capacity uh, notification in the system, in the me menu for the game. And to expect that out of like the standard user who's trying to mitigate the fact that they really just didn't ship enough VRAM with this device. I think that's an unreasonable expectation, but there could be some elements to this device that help it a little bit. You know, there could be some Vulkan optimizations, especially for RT, you know, game scope, I think can scan directly out to the display to reduce its memory footprint, things like that. Um, but again, in a world in which like you're, you're very gradated in terms of the memory that's being used in games, is that going to be sufficient? Like Alex said, maybe it's not, but I also think like, you know, you've got a single performance target. Devs could optimize a bit more for eight gigabytes of VRAM. Maybe they could opt, uh, offer some like, 
Steam Machine specific settings, or at least good Steam Machine default settings. Well, we'll have to see how that goes. I I guess it's like TBD on a lot of that stuff. And again, I, I also think it's worth rephrasing that, like, restating rather, that in a lot of AAA games, this is not going to be that much of an issue. And in the vast majority of, like, you know, your standard eSport titles, your GTA 5s, your Fortnites, this is not going to be a real issue. So it really is kind of like this cloistered world of AAA that we're talking about, like the high end of AAA, that's a serious concern. So I guess we'll see how significant mm -hmm. of an issue it is in the final device. Um, but I think it's just an unnecessary annoyance and unnecessary hindrance that didn't need to be there on day one. And then as time goes on, when we're talking about 2027, 2028, we're firmly into the next generation of console hardware. And is that really going to be a spec that's going to look good at that point? I don't, I don't really think so. Right. That is the an interesting point, right? This is coming in 2026. It's every chance that towards the end of 2027, we could see Xbox, we could see new PlayStation. They will be based on um, architectures a couple of generations beyond what we're seeing here. And what we're seeing here is only like a sort of very small step change over what we saw with the 2020 consoles. So from that respect, it does sit in a somewhat awkward place in terms of um, future proofing but you know again it's all going to come down to that pricing i think and uh, we just don't know what that is at the moment that's the the, the crazy thing